Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Saturday morning, July the 30th, 2022, 8.33 in the morning. And we're here in Deuteronomy chapter number three today. Uh Uh-oh, I think I might have lost you. Let me scroll here and see what happened. No, we're there. Okay, I just missed you on my screen. All right, as we said, Saturday morning, July the 30th, 2022, 8.34 in the morning, Deuteronomy chapter number three. So what we've seen so far is the book of Deuteronomy is Moses addressing the children of Israel, and he's giving them a bit of a review. Now, this is very, very important for two reasons. Number one, the young people here, that are now adults may not remember everything that occurred. They may not have even been alive for it. So think about this. <laughs> Everyone who was alive at the time that the spies went over, that was over 20 years of age, 20 and up, they didn't get to go in. So 40 years ago, the oldest person was 19 years old. And so now <clears throat> they're, they are going to be, what, 19 plus 40? 59 years old. That's the oldest person that's going to go over into the promised land, you know, give or take a year or two, because it did take some time to get over to Jordan and send the spies over and so forth. Not two, but give it, give a year or so. Uh, So you're looking at 59, 60 years old. That's the oldest person that's going to go over. Now, uh, many of them are going to be between Uh, let's see here, Uh, 59 or 60 and all the way down to 19 years old. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So people that weren't even born uh, until uh, the the, the people were born at the time that the spies went over, they're now going to be Uh, let's see. Well, I'm getting my math all mixed up. They're going to be 39 to 40 years old here. So we've got individuals and there's could be some that are yet children and teenagers. Nonetheless, these people may not know the entire history. So Moses is recounting everything that occurred to explain to them what happened, why it happened, why God's doing it this way and what they can expect. Now there's a second reason <clears throat> and it's this. Well, there. I guess there's a third reason. Sometimes the longer I think about something, the more reasons I can come up with. A, a second reason would be uh, it's good to recount things because you remember them when you recount them. The more you study, the more you go over something. The saying that I like to use is repetition is the key to learning. And then I say it about 15 times to make the point. Repetition is the key to learning. <clears throat> the other thing is to reinforce and remind the children of Israel what God expects of them. The older generation did not follow through on what God expected of them. And so they're paying the price. They died in the wilderness. So let's pray and cover chapter number three. Much of it's going to be review. And then we're going to learn some interesting facts here at the end uh, about Moses desiring to still see the promised land, but the Lord still telling him no. Father, thank you for our study. Thank you for our reading this morning. Give us wisdom from what we study and read. Help us to see what the scripture's teaching. May we heed the similar lessons in our own lives. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, Deuteronomy 3, verse number 1. Then we turned and went up the way to Bashan, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against us, he and all his people, to battle at Idri. And the Lord said unto me, Fear him not, for I will deliver him and all his people and his land into thy hand. And thou shalt do unto him as thou didst unto Sihon, king of the Amorites, which dwelt at Heshbon. So the Lord our God delivered into our hands Og also, the king of Bashan, and all his people. And we smote him until none was left to him remaining. And we took all his cities at that time. There was not a city which we took not from them. Three score cities, 60 cities, that's a lot. All the region of Argob, the kingdom of Og and Bashan. All these cities were fenced with high walls, gates, and bars, beside unwalled towns a great many. So as Moses describes the cities here, they're going to encounter cities like this in the promised land that they're going to have to defeat. So by giving them this information, he's preparing their hearts for the fact that God can and will do whatever it takes to give them victory. So by hearing that there were some high fenced walls and gates in these cities that were already defeated, 
<clears throat> when they encounter Jericho with its high fenced wall and gate, uh, they're going to be able to take that as well. Verse number six, and, and we utterly destroyed them as we did unto Sihon, king of Heshbon, utterly destroying the men, women, and children of every city. But all the cattle and the spoil of the cities we took for a prey to ourselves. And we took at that time out of the hand of the two kings of the Amorites, the land that was on this side Jordan, from the river of Arnon unto Mount Hermon, which Hermon, the Sidonians, call Syrian, and the Amorites call it Shinir, all the cities of the plain, and all Gilead, and all Bashan, unto Salca and Idri, uh, cities of the kingdom of Og and Bashan. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Rabbath of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth thereof, after the cubit of a man. Now, I don't know what a bedstead is. I guess I should look that up and find out what it is. <clears throat> but whatever it is, it's nine cubits in length. Is it a bed? Uh, could his bed be nine cubits in length, which would be 18 uh, inches, which would make it uh, 13 and a half feet long? Speaking of the height of this man here, I'm not sure. Uh, verse 12, after this land, which we possessed at that time from Aurora, which is by the river Arnon, and half Mount Gilead, and the cities thereof, gave I unto the Reubenites and to the Gadites. Remember, Reuben, Gad, and half tribe of Manasseh wanted to stay on the east side of Jordan. And so be, after detailing the uh, contract, if you will, they're going to still go over and fight, and they're going to help Israel conquer the land of Canaan. Uh, they're they're going to move back over on the east side of Jordan and dwell in that particular land. So that's what Moses is speaking of, if you remember the book of Numbers. Verse 13, And the rest of Gilead and all Bashan, being the kingdom of Og, gave I unto the half-tribe of Manasseh, all the region of Argob, with all Bashan, which was called the land of giants, Jair, the son of Manasseh, took all the country of Argob unto the coasts of Geshurai and Maacathai, and called them after his own name. Bashan Havoth Jair unto this day. And I gave Gilead unto Makir, and unto the Reubenites, and unto the Gadites I gave from Gilead, even unto the river Arnon, half the valley and the border, even unto the river Jabbok, which is the border of the, of the children of Ammon. Sorry. The plain also, and Jordan, and the coast thereof, from Chinnereth, even unto the sea of the plain, even the salt sea, under Ashdoth Pisgah eastward. <clears throat> so he's just detailing the boundaries of the lands that were given to those two and a half tribes. 18. And I commanded you at that time, saying, The Lord your God hath given you this land to possess it. Ye shall pass over, armed, before your brethren, the children of Israel, all that are meet for the war. But your wives and your little ones and your cattle, for I know that ye have much cattle, shall abide in your cities which I have given you. Until the Lord have given rest unto your brethren, as well as unto you, and until they also possess the land which the Lord your God hath given them beyond Jordan. And then shall ye return every man unto his possession which I have given you. And that's speaking of the contract made with Reuben, Gad, and half of Manasseh <clears throat> to go over and fight. They'll leave their women and children behind in their cities, but they will go over and fight and help the Israelites conquer the land. And I commanded Joshua at that time, verse 21, saying, Thine eyes have seen all that the Lord your God hath done unto these two kings, so shall the Lord do unto all the kingdoms whither thou passest. Ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. Boy, there's the theme of the chapter, by the way. The Lord your God, he shall fight for you. And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, so now Moses, remember he's been told by God, because you smote the rock at Horeb twice, you don't get to go into the promised land. You forfeited that right. So now Moses makes an appeal to God. O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. He said, you know, Lord, I'm watching you defeat these peoples and give us victory and helping us <clears throat> take claim to the land here. For what God is there in heaven or earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might? <clears throat> As I pray thee, let me go over. Moses is asking, please take me over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain and Lebanon. 
but the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, let it suffice thee. Speak no more unto me of this matter. So God gives Moses a hard no. He's wroth with him. He will not hear his appeal. And he said, don't bring it up again. That's harsh. Verse 27, get thee up into the top of Pisgah. That's a mountain, Mount Pisgah. And lift up thine eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward. And behold it with thine eyes, for thou shalt not go over this Jordan. God says to Moses, look, I'm not going to listen to this anymore. Don't ask me again. Do this. Go to the top of Mount Pisgah and look all around you. All that land that you see, that'll be Israel's. That's as much as you're going to see. Verse 28, but charge Joshua and encourage him and strengthen him. For he shall go over before this people and he shall cause them to inherit the land which thou shalt see. So he abode in the valley over against Beth Peor. And so... There it is. We're getting closer and closer. Can you feel the intensity building up as the Lord is leading his people to the promised land? Phrase of the chapter or or thought of the chapter, ye shall not fear them for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. Take that today with you. What is it that uh, the Lord is is challenging you in in your life? What, What enemies are you facing? What foes? What circumstances? What difficulties? Whatever they are, the Lord will fight for you. You know, you don't have to take vengeance on your own. You don't have to try to make things right on your own. The Lord will fight for you. All right, that's all that I got for you this morning. Thanks so much for watching. That was Deuteronomy 3. Tomorrow, 8 a.m., the the recording will play of Deuteronomy 4. And so we'll see you then. Thanks so much for watching. As always, like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here. And we'll see you tomorrow morning again. God bless you. Have a great day.